Welcome to another VR tutorial and in this one we're going to continue taking a look at our XR Interaction Toolkit bits and pieces and in this one we're going to take a look at how we can poke stuff. So I've got my scene here, a very simple one. I'm not going to show you how to set up um, Unity for um, XR Interaction and XR Plugin Management because I've got a whole host of those videos on my channel. Uh, I'll put in one of those cards above which can take you to the, one of those so you can see how to set it all up. Um, but yeah, it's using the XR Plugin Management, it's using XR Interaction Toolkit but it's using version 2.3. Uh, my last video that I did actually went into how you can install that. And in this video, we're going to focus on how we can use the poke interactor bits and pieces, along with some other scripts that come with XR Interaction Toolkit to actually poke things. Now you may be wondering what the benefit is of poking stuff. Who doesn't like a good poke? But for one, you've got buttons. It'll also work on UI. More or less anything you want to reach out and kind of touch and get some either visual feedback or feedback through code, then the poke interactor is going to allow you to do that. Now at the moment I haven't got any poke interactors in the scene, I haven't even got an XR rig. So let's go ahead and do that. So in this I'm going to create my XR origin and I'm going to right click go XR, XR origin VR. I'm going to put it at 0, 0, 0. I'm going to change the tracking origin mode to floor and I'm going to just move it back so we're um, in front of the table. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the ray interactor stuff because we're not going to be using that. So start at the bottom of the sorting group, remove the sorting group, remove the line visual, remove the line renderer, and remove the ray interactor. I'm then going to do the same for the right hand. Then on my left hand controller, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a poke interactor. And do the same for my right hand. Add a poke interactor. Like so. Then, as a child of this left hand controller, I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to 3D object and I'm going to create a sphere. This is going to be my poke point. And I can make this a lot smaller. Let's say we only want it to be like two centimeters across. And I can go ahead and I can remove my sphere collider and go back up to my left hand controller and my poke point and drag in the poke point into the attached transform. Then for this poke thing we got here, we can go ahead and right click in the poke point and we can create a new 3D object, which is going to be a cylinder. It's going to place that as a, a child. And then we want to, we'll just call this handle. We can rotate it around 90 degrees and pull it back a bit. We'll just scale it down ever so slightly and stretch it out. And we can also remove the capsule glider for this. Now we can go ahead and duplicate this and drag it under our right hand controller. And for our poke point attach transform, just drag in the poke point like so. Okay, so now we've actually gone ahead and made our pokies. What we need to do is to create something to poke. So we've got our poker and we need a pokey. So we'll right click here and we're going to create a new cylinder and we'll reset this to zero 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 move it up this is going to be the base of our button let's make that a lot smaller and pull it down like that we don't need the collider for this either so this is our button base we'll give it a good name in the inspector and then we need to create our button so we can duplicate the button base because when that's nearly the size we need and we'll just call this button and we'll Use the rec transform tool and we'll make it a bit higher. Think the size down a little bit. And this is going to be our button stem. And then we'll duplicate that. Pull it up. We're just doing some temporary artwork here for our button. Make it big. This is our button head. And what we'll do is we'll create an empty object, put it at zero, zero, zero. We'll call this button, like so. We'll drag it into our button head, press W, and we'll reset it. That's so about there, and we'll just move it up so it's at the top of our button head. Like that. 
and then we'll drag it out of there and we'll put in our button head and our button stem into our button object. So both of these two game objects are inside this button object here which we can then move up and down and you see it all moves. We'll make a completely empty game object and this is going to be called our poke button. This is just going to house all of the button components. You can drop that into the button stem. Just go reset because that'll be more or less in the middle. Take that out and put in our button and button base into the poke button object. So now when I move this around, see it all moves. And we can create a prefab out of this and then duplicate that button as many times as we need. So a couple more things that we're going to need to put into this um, poke button. We've got our artwork. Now we just need a collider that encapsulates it all. So what I'll do for that is just go to create a 3D object. We'll do a quick cube, scale it up and like that, like that. So it covers the whole button and we'll remove the mesh renderer and we'll remove the cube, feed, cube filter. Give this a name, let's poke collider. See those are the bounds of it there. So let's put some colors on here. And now we can start adding some of the scripts that come with XR Interaction Toolkit to allow us to interact with this button. And the first thing we're going to add on is the XR Simple Interactor. So on our, the root of our poke button, we can start typing XR Simple Interactable and it adds on that script there. We then need the XR Poke Filter. So we're going to add in the XR Poke Filter. And under poke, 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 and under poke configuration, we'll change the poke direction to negative Y. And then after that, we'll add in the XR poke follow affordance script. This all comes with XR Interaction Toolkit. And the poke follow transform is going to be the button that we made. And the max distance is how far we want that button to go down. So. Um, we don't want it to go too far down. So maybe for a minute, we just try 0.0. .0 one five a centimeter and a half that button's going to drop and we're also going to want to clamp to max distance so we don't have it shooting off somewhere when we go and poke it so we're going to go ahead and tick that box now when we enter vr we should be able to see our pokies and um, we'll try and poke this button see what happens so let's go ahead and press play in the editor i've got my awesome little matchsticks and drumsticks oh let's just give me a cool idea I wonder if you can do this some drums. Anyway, back to the button. So we've got our poke interactors, and then we can like poke our button. Poke, 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 and poke it to the left. And that's cool. So we poke it, it comes back up. If we hold it down, and it'll stay down until we release. And it uh, doesn't matter kind of what angle you're coming into it, we're going to poke it. That's really cool. So we can now poke things. So this can be a button that does something. So there we go. So that's how you would create um, that kind of poke interaction. And you could have the poke point. Um, I'm just thinking like, if we had our VR hands package that we made several videos ago, um, you could put like a poke point on your finger. Um, and that could be like your, it could be like an empty transform that follows the bone in your finger on that VR hand. And then that would be your poke interactor so that you could actually reach out of your hand and poke that button. I think that would work. So that's pretty cool. So I mentioned there that when you press the button, you can have it do an action. And the way that um, the, the poke button is set up is that when the button is down, when the poke is effectively active, that is your select on your poke, on your XR simple interactable on the poke button. And then when you when that is released, that is your, effectively your select exited. So you could hook up um, events to uh, here, so let me quickly show you. So in the um, 3D scene, I'm just going to create a sphere and we're just going to move this on top of the table. Let's make it a bit smaller. Like so. Um, we'll just put any old material on it for a second. Um, so then if we wanted to turn this off, this this game, I, this, if we wanted to interact with this item and the button and have it actually work like a button, then you would have Select entered, you could click on that event, drag in the sphere, and you could say game object set active ball off. And then when we let go of the button, we could say the sphere 
game object to active ball comes back on. Oops, I just realized that says game object send message up was it needs to be game object to active ball off. Okay, so let's try that. I've got my pokies, so I press the button so that now it's active this button and then when I release it turns it back on. Off, on, off, on, off, on. And you could have, you could rather than have it directly interacting with other game objects, you could have a script somewhere and maybe this button was part of like a control panel or something and that control panel had a script and you were saying what buttons you would press and it'd be feeding into that script and then doing whatever you wanted it to do. So I hope you really found that tutorial useful and how you could set up your poke interactors to make buttons and various different other things that you can prod and poke. And um, the world is your oyster. I'm going to put this project on my Patreon page, so feel free to grab it from there. Thanks very much, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.